Widows occupy a very special place in the biblical religions of Judaism and Christianity. In ancient Judaism, the widow was to be cared for and protected by her husband's family as well as by her own. Since it was difficult for her to earn a livelihood in the ancient society, farmers were to leave crops for the widows at the edges of their fields and vineyards. There was a very real sense in which they lived off the fringes of the economy. But perhaps the widow of today's lesson is the most well-known of all, even though not much is really known about her. We know her not just from an extended bibliography or biography, but from an extraordinary act that caught Jesus' eye, and subsequently the eyes of the world. By the gift of her two small copper coins, this widow has become a mighty witness of faith, giving to the church a powerful example and issuing a challenge. In the temple, there was a room where 13 offering receptacles were placed. Each receptacle had a trumpet-shaped opening into which people cast their offering. The trumpet shape amplified the sound of the offering that you placed into it. The different receptacles were used to support different aspects of temple life. Jesus was seated in this room, observing what people were contributing. The generous gifts of the rich people made a big clashing sound as they were cast into these trumpets. It was amazing that Jesus even heard the widow drop her two small copper coins into the treasury. But he does. And she gave the largest gift because she gave all she had. Even the money for her next meal. The well-to-do they gave out of their abundance, out of what they had left over after spending huge amounts on themselves. But this poor widow gave all she had. Now, I am sure Jesus' disciples were astonished at his observation. We can almost hear them saying what we are thinking. How can this poor widow's contribution help anyone? You cannot pay the insurance bills with the widow's coins, or the gas bill, or the electric bill. Try paying for a highly competent staff to run an effective professional ministry with pennies from widows. Both temple and church need dollars, big dollars, from the well-to-do. The mites from widows can't possibly help us. But dedication and commitment like this poor widow in our gospel does. And that is what Jesus is looking for from the well-to-do people. He wants to see how committed they are to his cause in the world. He is looking for people who believe in what the church stands for and who want it to continue. People who are willing to commit even a portion of the 100% that was given by that poor widow. This widow is mighty, not because of the size of her gift, but because of the size of her commitment. She has seen through the tinsel and trinkets of materialism. She has stared death in the face, and having grappled firsthand with loneliness and forsakenness, she sees the emptiness of life based on money alone. She was like a widow that I know who said to me, I have a house in the city, a house in the country, two cars and a boat, but I have nothing. We all struggle to cut through the materialistic hype of our time and to try to do the right thing. The right thing is true religion, and the true relationships with true religion promotes. What we need today are people, wealthy and poor, who will give generously to the work of the church. What we need today are men and women, married and single, who believe in what the church stands for, who want to see the church grow from strength to strength, who want it to be there for baptisms and confirmations, for weddings and funerals, who want it to inspire and educate, counsel and console, challenge and stimulate. 
who wanted to uphold the ethics and morals they believe in. With commitment like this mighty widow of the widow's might, we would be a mighty church. Poor as she was, this widow still supported her church. So many people today have opted out of supporting organized religion, saying that private religion is a better way to go. But private religion tends to be obscure, small-minded, tight-fisted. Organized religion calls us to bigness, to an open hand and a generous heart. It is there to serve what private religion cannot be found. May we all be open to Christ's love so that we will give as is required of us. May no selfishness or hardness of heart take control of us. Grant that we might have the strength to rearrange our priorities and to put God's kingdom first in our hearts and in our giving. And may we be like this poor widow and commit ourselves to this church. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help us to be more open in our giving so that it reflects the many blessings we have received. We give in support of our church, may continue to witness to the presence of Christ in this world, and inspire courage and faith in God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord we give to all those who are instruments of peace and hope in the world, especially those men and women in our armed forces. We pray to the Lord. Lord we give back to God in gratitude for his gifts of grace poured out on all men and women of faith. May we use God's gifts to help others. We pray to the Lord. We give to support those in our television community who worship with us each week, especially those whose intentions we are praying for today. May God continue to bless them through this televised Mass. We pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, Help us to open our hearts to share our faith with all those who still seek you in their lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God for you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to see the gifts we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his church. Lord, bless our offerings and make them holy. May these gifts fill our hearts with the love which gave St. Cecilia victory over all her suffering. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you Lift up your hearts We lift them up to the Lord Let us give thanks to the Lord our God It is right to give him thanks and praise Father, all-powerful and ever-living God we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You have no need of our praise, yet our desire to thank you is itself your gift. 
Our prayer thanksgiving adds nothing to your greatness, but makes us grow in your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory and honor are his, as heaven and earth angels and archangels cry out in unending praise. 